Okay, today we're going to get to a critical topic in object-oriented programming. So C++ so far has been a better C. And as a better C, it still can be used much as old standard Kernighan and Ritchie C was used, an imperative systems implementation language. Nothing changes. We just have improvements. So far, we've emphasized those improvements. But in today's lectures, we're going to talk about how you can become an object-oriented programmer using the methodology that was pioneered by the small talk people at Park in the 80s, and then when uh, pushed by Bjorn Strustrup at Bell Labs in the mid-85 uh, release of the first form of C++, which caught on immediately, it just changed industry's perspective on using one language effectively for most problem domains. So OO lets us vastly expand the usability of the C language. And we're going to take as an example, a very, very simple example of why we're doing that is because it's something that you'll intuitively understand. It's a point in the XY plane. We've been working with points ever since grade school. So that's a natural object to talk about. And then if you're following along in the text, the point at which you should be reading now is chapters four and five. That begins to talk about classes and uh, type extensibility, the OO characteristics of C++. So let's review your C programmers. You need to keep this in mind when you go over to OO. So I'd like you to name three native types in C. And then if you have the expression three divide symbol four, what is its value? This is all in the context of C. And if you have the expression 3.0 divide four, what is its value? So all of you are C programmers, this should be trivial. Okay. C, the native types, the native types of the C language, and therefore the native types of the C++ language, include short, int, double, char, long, long double, int star, all sorts of basic pointer types. Uh, so these are any of the essential native types of the language. Anything involving those types you just declare them with those keywords that determine those types, and then you can use the language relatively easily and efficiently if those types are expressive of the problem domain. Three divide four is a zero, and this always is a gotcha. Why? Because divide, when it sees two integer arguments, uh, it does integer division. So the full part of it, it, does, it just falls off. It has to be, in the next answer, 3.0, which is a double literal. It's a constant in the double domain. And when you divide a double by an int, then you're in the double domain, and then you get the possibly intuitive answer, three quarters. So what we're learning from, from the C native types is type matters. Type matters in very important ways. And we have to be very careful about use of types because use of types will also define the character of how the operator is determined and will also define things which we'll, we'll talk about later, which are conversion opportunities.
All this gets more complex in C++ because in C++ we add to the native types. We extend the native types. That's the heart of object-oriented programming.